In this video, I'll introduce tile sets, tile maps, and the tile ed tool. In the first part of the video, we'll create a tile set for the Super Mario Bros. world. The tile sets for these types of games are made up of all the things that generally don't move on the screen. The Mario sprite will move on the screen, but the background sky or the ground, it doesn't move, it scrolls. Now that we've downloaded our initial copy of the tile set, we're going to need a tool to edit it a bit. The tool does many things, but we're going to focus on the sprite gutter add part of the tool. I'll explain sprite gutter later when I have some pictures to help with the explanations. This tool is an add-on, or I should say a filter for GIMP, so we need to go into the zip file downloaded, copy the files, and then paste them in our plugins folder of GIMP. If you have a different version of GIMP than I do, I'm using 2.0, you might have to look for a different folder, or if you're on a Mac, you'll have to look for a different folder. All right, now that the Sprite Gutter Add tool is in GIMP, we can load up our tile set that we just downloaded, and I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see what it looks like unedited. There's no space in between tiles, they're right next to each other, 16 pixels by 16 pixels each. The Sprite Gutter Add tool will increase the width and height of our tile set, so I need to prepare the image by increasing it to, let's say, 800 by 800. GIMP has increased the size of the canvas, now I need to increase the size of the layer to match it. To find the Add Gutter tool, go to Filters and look in the Sprite Sheet section. I won't go into all the details of this tool, just know that we need to set the tile width and height to 16 and turn on Generate Gutter. In the background, we can see the tool doing its work in GIMP. It's adding a padding layer of pixels on the top, left, bottom, and right side of every tile. The new tile set is going to be a little bit bigger than the old one, so I'm going to need to select it and copy it into a new image. While zooming in close to check my selection, I can see the work of the gutter add tool. The edge of every tile looks a bit thicker. I'm looking closely to make sure I don't miss any pixels, but if I was smart, I'd realize there's an equation to solve this whole problem for me. I take the original width and height, let's say one at a time, original width, Divide by 16, then multiply by 18, because the Sprite Gutter Add tool adds one pixel on each side. Our tile set with Sprite Gutter now has to be put into the Kid Ridiculous Core Assets folder, so it can be used later by the tile map. In this section of the video, I'll introduce the Tile Ed tool for creating the maps that we'll use in our game. I've already downloaded and installed the Tile Ed tool. I'll put a link to the download in this video's description. To set up our new blank map, we'll use Zlib compression to keep the file size small. Start with a fairly small size map, just 16 by 16 tiles, and each tile in our tile set is 16 by 16 pixels. I'm saving the map file directly into the Kid Ridiculous Core Assets folder. The first thing to do with this new map is to import our tile set that we just created. Since we added gutter to our tile set, we need to tell tile ed that we've done this by setting our margin to 1 and our spacing to 2. Good, that looks like our tile set. The spacing looks alright. I'll start by creating a background of the sky color. Choose bucket fill. Choose the sky tile and fill her up. And I'll create a new tile layer for the foreground scenery, such as the ground, the hills, and the clouds. I'll use the stamp tool to draw one tile at a time. Pick the ground tile and go nuts! The order of the layers in this list is important. Moving the layers in this list will change their draw order. The foreground layer has some transparent tiles, but not the background layer. The visibility of each layer can also be set independently. All of these settings will be saved when the file is saved, and it will show later when the map is rendered in code. To start the coding section of the video, let's see what we had from last time. 
We should load the new tile map asset and give Mario something to walk on. Starting in the Play Screen class, I'll create a tiled map renderer reference. The renderer will keep a reference to the map and will draw the map whenever we need it. In the constructor, we'll create a TMX map loader and use it to load our map. Refresh the Assets folder to see the map files. From the TMX map loader, we get a tiled map object. That object contains all the information about the map we just created, such as its width and height in tiles, and the size of each tile in pixels. When I create the renderer, I'll pass it the tile map that was just created, and save only the renderer's reference. Rendering the map is similar to rendering sprites. First, we pass it the game's viewpoint, the game cam. I'm rendering the map before I draw the Mario sprite so that the Mario sprite will be shown on top of the map. Like that. But it feels like we're missing half of our view, so I need to reposition the camera. The game world width is 256 pixels, the game world height is 240 pixels, so I'll set the camera to be in the middle of that. 128 and 120. After updating the game cam's position, I need to call its update method. One final thing, Mario should be running on the ground and not in the ground. To fix this, we'll change the values that we pass to the Mario sprite update method. I want to pass it two values, so I'm going to use the vector2 class from libgdx math. I know that each tile is 16 pixels high, and the ground is two tiles, so I just need to move Mario up by 32 pixels. Make a few modifications to the update method. Save those two files and do a test run. That's great. It almost looks like an intro screen. I had a lot of fun doing this video. So if you guys liked it, you can hit the like button. If you want to know when more of these videos come out, hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.